Hey, what is up everyone? This is Music Tech Help Guy and welcome to part seven of my Logic Pro 11 Essentials course. In this video, I'm going to show you one of the most important tools in any DAW, the grid. The grid defines specific musical divisions that you can edit to and follow. Bars, beats, eighth notes, 16th notes, eighth note triplets, etc. If we didn't have a grid, we would essentially just be editing to a blank slate with no reference for rhythm or tempo or meter. And I'm not saying that all music needs to be perfectly quantized to the grid. That's completely untrue. There are certain genres like many genres of electronic music that benefit from being perfectly on the grid, especially if you're using drum machines and electronic drum kits and things like that. But other genres of music like rock, country, folk, acoustic music, these benefit from having the edits being slightly off the grid. So you'll find in those genres, an emphasis is placed on maintaining the human element of the performance, therefore not quantizing everything perfectly in time with the grid. Virtually every editor in Logic Pro is going to refer back to the grid in some way. So it's essential to learn how to edit to the grid for editing your audio recordings, programming MIDI, building beats in the step sequencer, and building out musical arrangements. Before we get started, I need to quickly tell you about today's sponsor, Boombox. Boombox has been a longtime sponsor of the channel, and you're likely already aware of the file storage and collaboration tools that Boombox has to offer. But let's dive into some of the new features of Boombot AI. The chord generator is one of my favorites. For example, I could type in something like C minor uplifting progression for a pop pre-chorus, and it generates a MIDI progression for me. And then you can refine your description. So I can tell Boombox AI things like to extend the progression to be eight bars in length. And one last revision, let's change the G chord in bar four to G minor seven. When you're happy with the result, you can save the progression directly to your Boombox account as MIDI or click share to share with a collaborator or generate a link. If you wanna check out Boombox for yourself, head over to boombox.io today and sign up to get four gigabytes of free storage or upgrade to one of their paid plans for additional storage and pro and premium features. Okay, so I've got a demo project here with just two drum samples in here, a kick sample and a snare sample. So the snare by itself sounds like this. And remember, you can press S to solo the selected track. And then I've got uh, the kick. And we're going to use this kick and snare sample to build just a really rough beat. And also, I want to show you guys how to use the grid and edit to the grid in Logic. So I, I find this is one of the easiest sort of starter exercises for understanding the grid in any DAW, is just starting with a kick and snare sample. So one other thing I want to show you here before we get into the grid editing is I want to show you how to change the color of regions and tracks since I didn't do that in the last video. If you select a region or multiple regions and you press option C, this will bring up your color palette and then you can change the color of those regions to any color you like. Likewise, if I select one or multiple tracks, I can right click on the left side here or control click and you can go down to assign track color and then you can give that track a color as well. So that's just how you can customize the color of the regions and tracks. Okay, so next let's talk about our most basic edit tool, and that is the pointer tool. Now you can access the edit tools right here in the center toward the top. There's two of them, and by default, the left one should be on the pointer tool. If it's not, go ahead and select that here. The one on the right is actually the command click tool. We're not gonna be using this at all for this video, but later on in the course, we'll get into all of these other tools. But for now, we're just gonna be using the pointer tool, which is the default left click tool. So the pointer tool allows you to click and drag and move things around. You can shift them around on the timeline. It also allows you to trim things from the left or right side. So you can trim uh, any of your regions this way. You can 
also loop them from the upper right as I demonstrated in another video. But the way these edit tools work is they follow the grid and the grid are these lines in the background here. And they're also marked by these little ticks up at the top of the ruler or the timeline. So how do you know what these grid divisions represent? Well, if you come up to the LCD display and click here, then go to custom. This will show you your tempo. This will show you your time signature or your meter. So we're in four, four time. That means there's just four beats per measure. And then this value right below the meter is your grid value, your grid division value. So right now the grid division is set to a 16th note, which means that each of these lines on the grid and each of these little ticks up on the timeline or ruler are a 16th note. So what is a 16th note? Well, a 16th note is 1 16th of one bar of music or one measure of music. So you can think of 4-4 four, four time as having four beats per measure and having four what are called quarter notes per measure. So those quarter notes are here on 1, 1-2, one, 1-3, one, and 1-4. And what these numbers are telling you is the bar, the beat, and the division on the grid. And if you zoom in further, you'll see that every single division is labeled. So we have bar one, bar one, beat one, division two, bar one, beat one, division three, bar one, beat one, division four, bar one, beat two, and so forth and so on. So the beats, the main beats are here, 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 and here. Those are the four beats per measure in 4-4 four, four time. And as you move the playhead around, you'll actually see the playhead position up here when you're in the custom LCD mode. And so again, this is telling us that the playhead is at bar one, beat two of bar one, division one. And then this last one is ticks. A tick is just sort of like a division of a beat. Um, so like as I drag through here, you'll see that there are, it looks like there's 240, yeah. I think there's 240 total ticks per division, at least with 16th notes. And there are a total of 960 ticks per beat with MIDI beat clock values like this. Now, one of the things you'll notice is if you change your grid division to say something like slash eight, this means that now the grid lines are eighth notes instead of 16th notes. So now we just have two eighth notes per beat rather than four 16th notes. And again, they're called eighth notes because there are eight of them per measure. If I go back to 16, you'll see we have 16 again. And then the other two you'll commonly use for music applications are slash 12 and sometimes slash 24. Slash 12 is eighth note triplets. So this means you have three divisions per beat rather than two or four and 12 total divisions per bar. And then if you put this on slash 24, this is 16th note triplets. So now you have six divisions per beat and 24 divisions per bar. If you're a beginner to all of this and you don't know anything about rhythmic counting or music theory at all, just stick with slash 16 for now because the vast majority of editing I'll be doing, not only in this video, but in future videos will be done with a 16th note grid. Now, another option here that's going to heavily influence how uh, the grid is handled and how the edit tools follow the grid is the grid snap options right here. So click here. It's probably going to be on smart by default and make sure that snap to grid is turned on. You can turn this on or off by clicking here or just by pressing command G. And what smart does is it will snap your regions to the grid lines. See how it snaps to the grid line. In fact, we're going to switch over to absolute value here for a moment and we'll come back to the other one. But you can see that the front end will snap to the grid lines. But with smart mode, it's sort of like an adaptive mode. If I really need to get in between the grid lines, I can still do that. So that's what smart mode does. It's sort of like a, an adaptive grid snap. Now, the other ones that you'll commonly use for music creation are bar, beat, and division. These other ones you're probably not going to use very often. What bar does is it snaps all of your edits directly to the bar lines. So you can see as I drag this sample over, it's only snapping to the bar lines. So to the first beat of each measure. Likewise, I could come up here and set this to beat. And now my edits will snap to the quarter notes only, the beats only. So I can only put this on 
two one, two two, two three, two four, three one, and so forth and so on. Now this can be helpful because, uh, for example, let's say I want to do a four on the floor kick pattern where I just have one kick on each beat. Well, what I can do is I can trim this up from the back end here. And you'll see that not only does moving a region snap to the grid, so does trimming to the grid. So if I take this sample and I hold option and drag over, this will duplicate it. And again, the position of the region will snap to the beats on the grid because we're in beat grid snap and we're snapping to absolute values. We're going to talk about the difference between these in just a bit, but for now, let's just work in absolute value. Now, let's say that I wanted my snare drum to be on two and four. Well, I can trim this up as well, and then I can move it on two, hold option to duplicate it over to four. And here's what I have. Like a super basic four on the floor beat. Let's slow down the tempo a little bit. Let's go like 88. And notice that all of the regions get a little bit shorter, but they still maintain their position on the grid. Now, what we can do at this point is if I want to repeat this, I can drag over all of these samples and hit Command R, but look what happens. It actually puts it directly up against the previous sample there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag both of these out just like so. And we're going to snap them right to the bar line. So now when I drag over these and hit Command R, you'll see that they repeat right at the bar lines. And we could add in maybe a hi-hat loop or something. Let's go up here to the loop browser. Remember, you can open this up by clicking here or by pressing O. And I'm just going to search up hi-hat. And let's grab this one called 80s Power Pop Hi-Hat. Let's just drag that in down here on a new track. Close out the loop browser. And you'll see now we have three tracks. So what rhythmic value is that hi-hat playing? Well, again, if we take a look at our grid division values, you can see that each hi-hat is on a 16th note. So the kicks are on the, the main beats, one, two, three, and four. The snare is on the second and fourth beat. And then the hi-hats are on all 16th notes. Let's take this back a bit here. Let's delete all of this. And let's try to vary our kick pattern a little bit. Now, the last snap value I want to show you that's really helpful for this is division. And what this will do is it'll snap to those division grid lines. So now I can snap to 16th notes. So let's say I want to do a, like a completely different pattern with my kick drum. Let's maybe pull this here on the fourth 16th note of beat one, and then I'll duplicate this over to the third 16th note of beat two. And again, I'm just holding down option while clicking and dragging to duplicate. Maybe pull that there. So we've got a completely different kick pattern now. And I can drag over these regions and hold option. And I can put them right here at bar two. I can drag over all of these, hold option, and put them right here at bar three. And I can duplicate my snare hits as well. And remember, you can press Command A to select all and then Command U to set the cycle range around all of the selected regions. OK, so let's talk about the difference between an absolute grid and a relative grid. So when you choose to snap regions to an absolute value, what that means is that no matter where the region is, when you move it, it's always going to snap to the grid division directly to the grid division. So what I did there is I turned off my grid snap and I kind of pushed these off of the grid. You can see that these three samples are no longer on the grid. If I turn grid snap back on, go to division and then use absolute value. When I grab these, there's only two places I can go. I can either go to the next division over or the next division before. So again, I can either stay in the original location, go before or one grid division after. Same thing here. So the front end of the region has to snap to the grid value. 
So to show you an example of where I would use snap regions to relative value, I've switched over to a completely different project. Here's a vocal recording, and you can see that the vocal recording comes in like somewhere in between the divisions. It's not directly on a grid division. And let's say we want to move this whole recording over by two bars and still maintain its relative position on the grid. If I were to switch over to bar and then use absolute and I drag this over, you'll see the first thing that happens is the front end of the region snaps to the bar line. So if I pull this over here, it's just going to be out of time. So what I can do is I can switch over to relative value and now it will move the region by a bar at a time, but you can see that it's not snapping the front end of the region to the bar line. So it's maintaining its relative position on the grid. And now the same note in the vocal that was on the downbeat over here at bar 24 is now at bar 26. Okay, so that's how the grid works in Logic Pro. Like I said before, the grid is an absolutely essential tool you'll need to learn for editing, for composing, for making beats. When we get into MIDI and the step sequencer, you'll see that these grid division values are also in those editors. The grid is something that is in all DAWs and transcends just audio editing in the tracks area. It's a key feature in MIDI editors as well that you should get yourself familiar with, especially if you're brand new to all of this. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. Thanks for the support and thanks for watching.